Welcome back. Now, at the height of the COVID-19 pandemic, schools resorted to online lessons, but now most have returned to normal schooling. However, on that same note, the principal of one of the online schools, Mark Anderson, says online learning is the future and will continue to grow in South Africa and around the world. Mark Anderson, uh, COA Academy principal and co-founder, joins me this morning to take this uh, conversation forward. Uh, Mark, thank you for your time. Good morning to you. Hopefully I'm pronouncing it correctly. Is it COA Academy? Good morning, Tamila. That's exactly right. Coa Academy. Perfect. And you believe that online learning is the future, not only for South Africa, but you know that trend definitely going around the world. Absolutely. I, th I think I'd probably adjust it slightly and say online learning is definitely a part of the future of South African education. Yeah. How has it grown, Mark? Do you think uh, you know from when it was first uh, you know introduced, uh, from obviously in-person learning to the you know what we've experienced with COVID-19 and to date? Yeah, Jamila. I think one of the things that's important to recognise is that online learning in South Africa has actually been around for quite a while. Uh, well before COVID, and I think what COVID did was accelerate the the, the sort of appetite and uh, uh, desire for online learning in South Africa. It certainly wasn't for everyone, and I think certain schools that were forced into the position of online learning um, experienced negative outcomes. But those online schools, which were set up specifically for the online space, mm. um, have actually thrived uh, in the last few years. Yeah, and I know you are probably of the argument that it also offers unparalleled access to a wider range of learning experiences, right? Uh, how so, Mark, when one would say, uh, we are so used to in-person learning, we feel that you know, in-person learning has more experiences than sitting behind either your laptop or your computer. How does online learning actually provide that experience? Absolutely, it's a fantastic question. And I think one of the pitfalls of thinking about online learning is thinking of it as a like-for-like -like replacement for in-person learning. Mm. And it's, it's not. They're, they're very different things. Um, you know, schools that have taken the, the physical traditional model and tried to replicate it on a screen have found a real sense of disengagement. I think a, a lot of parents experience this during lockdown in particular, where the school would take the systems and the structures and the approach of a physical school and try to present it on a screen and you just get that disengagement. You know, kids would say things like, I miss my friends. Parents would say things like, I don't really know what my kids are doing. I think they're playing Fortnite all day mm. in their bedroom. Parent uh, Teachers as well would get really frustrated saying, I don't know which kids need the academic support when they need it. Yeah. And so that's the pitfall of thinking that online learning is like for like a substitute for physical schooling. Yeah. What we see with online learning is that when it's set up specifically for the online space, we get a whole world of access and opportunities that we didn't have before in physical schooling, where a lot of the constraints that frustrate us in education, that have actually kept education static for really decades um, in South Africa, just fall away and we get opportunities that we didn't have before. And what would you say is the affordability aspect? Is it for everyone? Certainly not. And I think this is a, a critical part of the conversation. Um, you know, when it comes to affordability, but not just affordability, but what suits the individual child. One of the things that I would say is not every child thrives in a good online school in the same way that not every child thrives in a good physical school. You know, there are certain models of schooling that are very well suited to particular children. And what I'm so excited about for the future of education in South Africa mm. is more options for parents than we've ever had before. Right. And I don't think online schooling is going to replace physical schooling. But I certainly think it's going to be one of the arsenal options for parents going forward where they can say, I might even have two children. One type of suit, one type of education suits this child. Another type of education suits this child. And they really get to leverage the benefits of their options mm. uh, for their particular situation and their kids. Right. When we, make, when we talk options, we, we, we're referring mostly to mm. parents and, uh, you know, children in this context. But what about the teachers? Uh, is this also a, uh, an ideal option for them? Because uh, for some who've been teaching probably, you know, most of their lives, uh, they're so used to in person. But are they more open to the option of actually uh, having an online classroom as opposed to an in-person one? Yeah, Tamilo, I think one of the things that uh, COA teachers in particular are absolutely loving is the idea that as educators, we've always been taught not to focus on the content, not to just focus on rote memorization, delivery of content, heavy assessment cycles. We must be facilitators of learning, facilitators of education. 
And at COA, what we've been able to do, thanks to our eight-person pods, is really transform the teacher from somebody who's very focused on content mm. into somebody who's very focused on the individual child. So we're able to put kids onto individualized timetables where every child has their own timetable. And they're working through contents on underlying courses and platforms that let them move at their own pace, um, focus on their strengths, mitigate their challenges. And the teacher then comes along and, and really does what they were trained to do, which is facilitate that process and really focus on the individual child. Mm. While you're touching on that, uh, Mark, um, I then wonder how you then suggest we should almost evaluate the academic outcomes of several specific online schools, especially this year. And uh, even with previous mm. years, the past two years with, with COVID, how would you suggest that we evaluate those outcomes? Such an important part of the conversation, Tamela. I mm. think that this is something that over the years to come, we need to, to really take very seriously on, on a, a few different levels, right from the, the policy making level down to the individual families. And, um, you know, the, recently in the, in the last week or so, we've seen a series of articles that, that were published across media outlets in South Africa, which issued quite a, a, a broad sweeping uh, and quite a negative perspective on not just online schooling, but homeschooling in general, effectively saying that if you homeschool your child, they're going to fall behind in terms of educational milestones. And we actually just know that that's not true. From our personal experience at COA, but from way before that, for, for decades, we've actually seen um, homeschool models thriving and actually in, in a lot of situations putting kids ahead mm. of their age grade. Um, and, and so we know that there's no one standard of education in South Africa in terms of physical schooling, traditional right. schools. You know, not all physical schools in South Africa are equal. The same is true in South African online schools. Um, some have fallen into the pitfall of dragging that traditional model onto a screen. Others, unfortunately, have prioritized business growth over academic standards. And we're starting to see those online schools fail and fall. Mm. And that's not a bad thing in the long run for South African education because we want high standards. Absolutely. We really want online schools in South Africa that have thoroughly thought through what they're doing, designed it specifically for the online space, and then, Tamila, what you, what you brought up there is critical. Mm. The school has to be doing rigorous monitoring and evaluation. They have to be accountable for the sort of academic delivery that they're producing. Um, and part of that is going to come from the school themselves, right. saying what measures are we going to put in place to monitor and evaluate our own performance. But we're also hoping in South Africa to see legislation moving forward that's more flexible, more robust, decentralized, that really can hold online schools accountable for what they're doing in the online space. Can I agree more with you there, Mark? Shouldn't be compromising uh, schooling and the quality of education. Thank you so much. Mark Anderson, the principal and co-founder of COA Academy. Thank you for joining me at this time. Interesting, don't you think, about online learning and how it's shifting and moving. Uh, so